Battalion of President Heading, maintain 3,500 till established on the localizer. Third, the ILS 32 approach. The first thing I want to talk about, because this question came up on Instagram, um, and, and I did make a video for patrons about this, so if you want to see that, you can visit patreon.com slash learn TFP, but it's really, why is it considered safe to stall in a slip where it's not considered safe necessarily to stall in a skid, right? We talk a lot about that. So first of all, just reminding everybody that, you know, when an airplane's flying in a coordinated way, we've got both wings needing the same amount of relative wind. So as the airplane flies, the same amount of relative wind is hitting the left wing as is hitting the right wing. The tail feathers here, the vertical stabilizer is doing its job of weather veining the aircraft into that relative wind. And therefore, if we were to stall, the wings would in most cases stall at the exact same time. However, there are times when we cross control the airplane. Um, sometimes we cross control it such that the inside wing, the wing that's banked down on the inside, is seeing more relative wind. So that would be a case like this of left rudder, I mean left aileron and right rudder for me, right? So now we're flying with this inside wing seeing more relative wind and the outside wing seeing less, partially because it's blocked by the fuselage here. The opposite would be a skid, right? Pushing on well, what I would say is inside rudder. So we're banked left and we're also pushing left rudder. So we are swinging that outside wing through the air. All right, so those are those two cross-controlled situations. And, you know, here's a little bit of math that I think is fun to learn, but let's break it down to what's practical. Is the lift equation, right? Lift equals velocity squared times the coefficient of lift times the surface area of the wing times the air density. So what in the world does all that mean to you? Um, air density and surface area of the wing are things that are sort of fixed and figured out in performance planning, right? You're going to look at that on performance charts. You're going to figure out what the temperature is and all that. And obviously the surface area of the wing is built into the POH. <laughs> you usually can't change that unless certain kinds of flaps. Um, but the things you can control our velocity squared and coefficient of lift, which in this case we're going to sit, uh, consider as equal to angle of attack, all right? If that makes physics guys go crazy, sorry, but that's the way we're going to think about it. Speed and angle of attack, and that's what you have to control. So the reason that's important is like if you consider that skidding turn where you're pushing inside rudder, you're swinging that outside wing through the air, right? And if you're adding airflow, if you're adding speed, we just said what would increase your lift? Speed times angle of attack, more speed, more lift. So in those situations, the aircraft will overbank. And you can experience that if you just consider the secondary effects of controls. I don't know how many CFIs build this into like an initial sort of get comfortable with the airplane program, but often I'll just say to pilots, you know, we're never gonna fly this way, but I want you to try something. Just push on the rudder, just stab at it and see what happens. And the first thing that happens is the airplane yaws. But the second thing that happens is the airplane yaws and begins to roll. Right? And there is some value to that. Like often if people are way too heavy on the yoke, I'll have them fly around just using their feet. So go into a bank using rudder, come out of the bank using rudder. And again, we're never really gonna fly that way, but it's just to kind of build the idea that's adding speed to a wing, adding airflow to that wing will increase the lift. So back to the question of why is it considered safer to stall in a slip than it is to stall in a skid? The short answer to that is the amount of time that you would have to recognize the strange situation and recover or prevent a spin from happening. And so kind of think about that. If can you guys see my little runway, All right. so if you're turning in toward the runway and you're pushing what we said in that slipping condition, you're banked left, pushing right aileron. So that lower wing, the inside wing is the one getting more of the airflow. If you were to stall the airplane, that is, if you were to get too slow, you drop your pen, your phone rings, you're looking for it, the kids are crying in the back, whatever it is. If you were to get too slow, which wing has more airflow? The lower one. Which wing has less airflow? The upper one. So if this aircraft were to stall, it would roll in this direction, giving you all of that time to recognize it, break the stall, stop the rotation, and prevent the spin from happening. That's considered a lot of time. So it's not like we want to stall in a slip close to the ground, but that's a heck of a lot safer than the second thing, which is if you're skidding around the turn, now which wing has more airflow? This outside wing, right? And the inside wing has less. So an aircraft in this situation, if it were to stall, 
if it were to stall, would roll like that, right? And that is unrecoverable at most pattern altitudes. Look up in the sky, there you are. Look up in the sky, there you are. Floating like an angel on the air.